I'm going to cover the basics of how to make a world position offset animation like this one. Now, uh, this is an unlit material, however there are solutions for lit materials if that's what you need. I'm not going to really be going over that in this video, however I will be touching on it briefly later. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is look at the mesh we're using. It's a flat plane with some divisions so that we can bend it and the UVs are just a uh, flat projection. The node that makes all of this work is the rotate about axis node. So I'm going to go over what each of these inputs requires and then we'll start with some basic animations and build up to something more complex later. Uh, position just takes in uh, absolute world position. A pivot point and rotation axis combine to uh, control where to pivot from and what direction to pivot in. And the reason axis needs to be normalized is because uh, the magnitude is has got its own input as a uh, rotation angle, which just controls how far to pivot. Uh, so let's move into the viewport and show off how it works. So to start, we're going to rotate the entire mesh around its pivot point and on the x-axis here. So if I increase the angle, you'll see that it rocks back and forth on that x-axis. Now if I wanted to change the axis to y, you can see now it uh, rotates side to side. And this is independent of the rotation of the actual object. So if I move this 90 degrees, you'll see it's still rotating on the world axis. So now I'm going to go over what you want, what you can do if you want to make it rotate relative to the object rotation. So let's say you've got a mesh that's rotated like this so that its X axis doesn't align with the world axis and you want to rotate it along its own X axis. Uh, how would we obtain that vector? Well, We've got the uh, world up, that's just 0, 0, 1. And we've also got the vertex normal of the plane. Those just point this way. And what we can do is just use a cross product. And um, the way I remember cross product is to just use this hand position here. So we're taking in two vectors and we're getting this third vector. Uh, and in that case, it's going to point to the right. So in the material editor, that's going to look like this with just the vector normal world space crossed with uh, world up. And you'll see now that when we change the angle, instead of being on the world axis, it's on the object axis. And if we rotate the mesh, it will update based on the rotation of the mesh. So if we wanted it to rock side to side now, we could just use the vertex normal as our axis. And now, uh, no matter where we rotate the mesh, it'll go side to side. So just as a quick aside, you can replace the uh, world up with object orientation, which just outputs the up vector of the actual object in case you want to have those facing in a, in a non-world up uh, orientation and just to show say I want to spin it on its up vector you can do something like that and it'll rotate in place but for the rest of this I'm just going to be using world up because I don't plan on having any rotations like this now at this point I want to mention that if you need to use an up vector that isn't just the world up uh, that's not going to work for things like foliage actors or uh, instanced meshes because those don't have their own object orientation um, but what you can use is something called pivot painter it requires the use of a max script and it does things like baking certain vertex direction into the vertex colors with it, you can also correct the normals of lit materials through the vertex shader. Uh, it also can output per instance pivot position, uh, which requires the use of custom UVs. There's a new version of Pivot Painter that uh, has some improvements, but I'm not familiar with it. I would suggest that you check out the content example map on Pivot Painter if you want more information on that. So going back to our ring of meshes, you can see that I've got a blossoming animation like this, but that's only because they're all facing towards the center. If I rotate one of them, you'll see we get some intersections 
in the animation. So how can we make it so that everything bends towards the center of this regardless of the orientation of the meshes? So instead of using the vertex normals to find our rotation axis, what we need to find is the direction towards the center point from the actual object. So to do that, we need the pivot point of the object and the center point that we want to rotate to. And in this case, for now, I'm just going to use the uh, position of this plane here. So what I've done is taken the location of the plane and I'm subtracting the object pivot point from that location to get uh, the direction and then I'm normalizing just to get rid of the magnitude and what we'll see is when we use that pretty much the exact same uh, animation hold on but the difference is that I can now rotate the meshes and they will still move towards that center point regardless of their orientation now, having to place down an object so that you can manually type in its position isn't very user-friendly, so what I'm going to do is show off one of my favorite features of the engine, uh, material parameter collections, and what that allows us to do is have variables that we can use across all materials, and in this case, I'm going to combine it with a bit of blueprint to store our center point data. So let's start by making a material parameter collection, and for this, we're just going to use one vector parameter and call it center point. And then we need to make a blueprint class and we're going to add some code in here so that we can place it anywhere in the level and it'll update this vector parameter to that location. So all we need to do in this blueprint is get the location of the blueprint uh, which is self, and then set a vector parameter uh, for that demo uh, MPC and choose our center point variable and convert the location into a color. So what'll happen? Well, first we need to parameter collection, uh, choose that collection we made, use center point, now, because we are converting to a color, we're getting that extra alpha channel. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is use a component mask uh, to mask off that alpha. Otherwise, you'll get an error. So if we drop this blueprint into the viewport, you'll see uh, that all the meshes start to rotate away from wherever we put that. Uh, now this is really useful for things like dynamic foliage if you want it to bend away from your character, but you can really do whatever you want with it. Now that we've got the meshes rotating the way we want, let's make use of all those extroverts. Uh, the first thing we can do is multiply the uh, angle by a linear gradient so that instead of the entire mesh uh, rotating as one object, it will bend. Uh, based on what the gradient looks like. So the best way to make a gradient is just to use a component mask on a texture coordinate. And we'll plug that in there. So now you can see, oh, it looks like uh, it's masking from top to bottom. <laughs> so uh, all you need to do is um, run it through a one minus to reverse the gradient. And now you see, we've got some more interesting motion. Another thing you can do is add time to this and run that through a sign so that it appears to wiggle back and forth. like so. And if you want to change the frequency of that wiggle, you can just modify the period to get a different result. Another way you could animate it is to use time in the angle instead. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to have a circular motion, you could append uh, a sine and a cosine together 
and use that for the angle. And as you can see, you get that circular motion. One last thing I want to mention before I wrap this up is that you don't have to mask the motion just in the UV space. So another way to do that, for example, would be to use a sphere mask. And I would just use the, the same center point data and um, absolute world position to make a sphere mask. Uh, and that was useful for masking motion on clumps of meshes that were at different heights in the world. As a final note, I just want to mention that you can add together or lerp uh, any motion that you make with these rotators. And if you build up motion, you can get a pretty sophisticated looking result. So for example, this fire animation you see here was created using all of the things I went over in this video.